morning everybody today we are going to talk about the GCI questions repeated questions maybe they will ask you during the round of the GCI related to the infection control where are your infection control policies and procedures uh, located it is all the policies of the hostel located in the QPS you will find in your computer on the right side QPS file you will find all the policies and procedures all forms to be used so if you uh, you would like to read the policies you have to click this please how do you prevent the transmission of the microorganism this is a question may be asked at any place how you will prevent transmission of microorganism uh, how you will decrease the hostile acquired infection by hand hygiene so you are breaking the chain you have to do hand hygiene what is the meaning of the standard precaution before going the meaning of standard precaution there is a question maybe they will ask you about uh, what is the difference or uh, what is the difference between hand washing and hand hygiene and what is the most e effective is hand washing or hand hygiene we can say this is a similar effect but hand washing we are using if we have a case more susceptible to have spores of the colostridium difficile and also if your hand is visibly soiled if there, in, there is any body fluids uh, secretions uh, uh, urine or anything in your hand visibly not clean so you have to do hand washing so we can say it is similar effect but the hand washing we are using if our hand is spoiled with any body fluids and if i have a cases admitted uh, gastroenteritis with more susceptible spores of colostridium difficile you know already colostridium difficile cannot be removed by by the alcohol gel you have to do hand washing by soap and water what is the meaning of the standard precaution you know we have two types of precautions in the hostels standard precaution and transmission based precaution standard precaution this is the basic you are using for all patients regardless they are infected or non infected so the definitions it's very simple can apply for every patient regardless their diagnosis or infectious uh, status. What is the elements? Hand hygiene, uh, personal protective equipment, handling and disposal of the contaminated items, sharps, needles, linen, medical waste, patient care equipment, laboratory specimen, cleaning of the room, patient placement and the cough etiquette hand hygiene you can see uh, other video about how to do the hand hygiene uh, the hand hygiene we have hand washing and there is types also it will come on the screen for the using uh, of the personal protective equipment you have to see also the video for wearing and the removal of the PPE uh, handling and disposal of the contaminated uh, items sharps and needles we have already sharp container you have to <coughs> change the sharp container if it is three fourths if it is three fourths or it is bad smell or there is a blood outside the uh, sharp box otherwise don't change so before we are telling you have to change it twice a week or every week now the new memo from from moh you have to change the sharp container if it is three fours and if it is bad smell there is blood inside and making a uh, bad smell and if it is dirty from outside maybe some drops of blood will be outside of the box the linen already we have uh, changed our uh, linen uh, uh, plastic colors yani we are collecting the linen in the two colors white color and orange and already distributed to all hostel orange this is for spoiled uh, linen or infected linen and white for non spoiled and non infected the medical waste already the, you know already how to dispose the medical waste we have uh, yellow plastic for infectious and we have black plastic for non-infectious or ordinary waste and we have red plastic for the placenta or the body tissue patient care equipments this one uh, like uh, an instrument how to deal uh, with this one in al-haya national hospital 
we are sending all the instrument for CSSD for washing and sterilization. So not allowed to wash in your area, not allowed to wash in your department. You have to put on the box and you have to uh, apply the transportation gel and you have to send immediately to the CSSD. Laboratory specimen, this is uh, how to deal with uh, specimen after collection. Suppose you have to write all data and it is clean from outside. You have to close tightly and you have to put the sample upright. You have to fix in the box, put on plastic, then put on the uh, box and give to the porter. Suppose the porter, she, she will not receive, she will not take the sample if it is spoiled with blood from outside and if it is not tightly closed and if there is no data and she has to wear the gloves uh, during the transportation of the uh, specimen. Cleaning of the room, this one, our stuff of housekeeping, they know already what is the delusion for, for Clorox. If you have infectious cases in the single room, or uh, in the airborne, how they will deal with, with these cases. The concentration of the Clorox, it will be 1 to 10. Already we educate them, but must be supervised from the, our staff. They have to see either they are using the correct concentration or not. The Clorox for infected cases, patient went to home. How she will clean, how she will do terminal cleaning for this room. She has to wash the wall and everything, the bed. Uh, everything in the room by soup and water, then they have to make delusion of Clorox 1 to 10, then they will clean all the room. This is under the supervision of the head nurse of the department, and if there is outbreak, supposed to be supervised by the infection control practitioner. Uh, the ordinary uh, clean, suppose she has a Clorox also, she is using for as a cleaning, uh, the, we have agent for cleaning, and we have Clorox for cleaning. The concentration of Clorox for the corridors and the, all the patient's room is supposed to be 100 ml over 10 liters of water. For the disinfectant, they are using also uh, Gento and uh, uh, they have uh, this for surfaces. Surface if they have to clean the chairs of the patient and any other surfaces uh, the patient will touch the post the cleaners they have surface if they are cleaning this area and they have to follow the time of contact. Patient placement this is depending on the diagnosis already you know how uh, we are pay putting the patient placement. Uh, I want to say that if you have any infectious case any infectious case to be placed in single room or negative pressure room, suppose the doctor will write in the order sheet the diagnosis and what is the type of precaution. Already we have standard precaution. This must be followed with all patients. And we have transmission-based precaution according to the disease. We have contact, droplet, and airborne. So the doctor, for example, if the patient already confirmed TB and the patient admitted in the airborne, airborne uh, isolation room, the doctor will write on the order sheet, standard precaution must follow with the airborne precaution. So the airborne, the staff already knows how to follow the airborne. They know the uh, uh, outlines of the airborne. Cough etiquette, this one, you have to teach your patient if they have coughing, the patient entering the ER or the OPD, to stop the transmission of infection. So you have to tell the patient to take tissue, and if there is cough, they have to uh, control the cough. Before this one, you have to uh, teach them, give them mask. If the patient refused to wear the mask, they are telling, we cannot, I cannot take breeze if I am wearing the mask. At this time, you have to teach him how to do the cuff etiquette by the arm. He has to cuff in the middle of the arm. Or otherwise, he will take tissue and he will control if there is coughing so to uh, control the transmission of infection. I'm sorry, maybe the video uh, will continue.
This is the types of the hand hygiene. Routine hand washing, 40 to 60 seconds. This we are using in all departments. Surgical hand uh, scrub, this is in OT. You are using, um, you are doing the right sequence of the scrub uh, by the chlorooxidine brush uh, within two minutes to six minutes. Use of alcohol uh, rub, this is 20 seconds to 30 seconds. And the antiseptic hand wash. This one, if you are doing invasive procedure on the departments, male ward, female ward, the doctor will insert any uh, anything and he will he has to uh, use the antiseptic soap and he has to do procedure of hand washing within one to two minutes before doing the procedure. This is the types of the hand hygiene. When you will do hand hygiene, we have already two before and three after. Before touching the patient, before going to the patient and touching the patient, you have to do hand hygiene. Before clean or aseptic procedure, if you are doing going to do procedure, you have to do hand hygiene. After touching the patient, after fluid exposure, after body fluid exposure, and after touching the patient surrounding, if you are using this hand hygiene as a part of your uh, if your uh, life in the work, it will be easy. You will not forget the sequence. If you are doing every day the sequence, so you will not forget the hand hygiene sequence. This is how to do the hand hygiene. Must be practice this one daily with the five moments. Uh, wearing and removal of the PPE. Already we have a video about how to wear and how to remove the PPE. And we can update this one with another video. This is a transmission based precaution. We have contact. This is green sign, droplet, red sign, and the airborne is the blue sign. You will see the types of diseases with the contact MRSA, skin diseases. In the contact, you have to wear the gloves and gown, so you have to make a barrier. The patient will be on the single room. We can make coherating. Coherating means the uh, same sign and symptom of the same patients with the same sign and symptoms. They can stay on the uh, double room or tri triple beds room. This is the coherating. No need for uh, negative pressure. Droplet, this one uh, red color, like mumps, meningitis. Droplet more secretions will come like patient with influenza. These cases uh, with droplet, you have to wear surgical mask. Also, if you are dealing with a patient, gloves and gown must be. This one will be a private room or single room, no need of negative pressure room. The airborne, uh, this, uh, the microorganism is very small, uh, less than five micron. So you have uh, to put the patient in the negative pressure room okay uh, the example of these diseases measles chicken box uh, corona the critical cases of corona if it is not critical mild cases so we can put on the single room but if critical cases of corona so more susceptible to be positive still we are uh, waiting the result so you have to place the patient in the airborne already also after the result if coming positive the patient will stay in the airborne isolation room you have to wear N95 all the staff did already fit test you have card you have to be familiar with this N95 you have to know your size I am 1860 you are 1870 whatever so you have to be familiar with the uh, with this N95. So you have to wear the N95 mask and place the patient in negative pressure room and you have to put blue sign of the airborne isolation room uh, outside and must be the door will be closed. Safe injection practice. Suppose all nurses, all doctors will not manipulate the needle once you will finish, you have to put as soon as possible on the sharp container as one unit. Don't break, don't bend the needle. 
don't give to somebody to put on the sharp. You are the one who will put on the sharp. If you are going to the room and there is no sharp container there, you have to take your tray with you. The nurse or the doctor or whatever who is the one uh, healthcare workers going to the patient room, you have to take your syringe with you. After finish all of your supplies, you have to put on the tray. You have to go back to the station, nurse's station, and you have to put everything on the right place. The syringe with needle as a one unit will be on the sharp container with, uh, without any manipulation. But if you have to, must uh, manipulate the needle or cover the needle, if must cover the needle, I'm telling, suppose you will not manipulate or not cover, but if must be cover the needle, it will be by scope method, by one hand only. This is the recabbing policy. We have a policy that not allow it to make recabbing for the needle, but if must be, you have to make by one hand. In Baluwe Health Clinic, this is a clinic present on the main lobby. Uh, the Dr. Mohammed Mahdi he is the one uh, responsible for Mbilwe Health Clinic, and the nurse is uh, her name Hafiza Shaban. They are responsible for making basic screening for all hired staff. They are responsible, so we'll see the scope of service. This is the scope of service for the Mbilwe Health Clinic. Pre-employment basic screening, investigation, immunization, work restriction if you have or you got any infectious disease you have to go employee health clinic they are the one will help you uh, to manage the situation they will discuss and they will write in the file if you need sick leave they will check what is the diagnosis according to the disease they will give you the sick leave uh, and also they are responsible for They are responsible for post exposure. They are responsible for the post exposure prophylaxis. If anybody has needle stick, suppose they will go immediately after make immediate action by washing with soap and water and covering the uh, injured site with uh, band aid. They have to go to Mbilwayi Health Clinic. What we'll do if there is sharp injury or blood exposure? First aid. First aid means wash immediately with soap and water, cover the injured area. And you have to report uh, to employee health clinic during duty hours. If after duty hours, you have to go to ER. You have to fill up the needle stick injury form already in the QBS and the OVR form. Also, you will find both forms in the QBS. Uh, your area supervisor, she's the one, will uh, report and suppose you have to inform the infectious infection control department and you have to go to Mbilwayi Health Clinic. Do staff attend infection control program and they train to handle the biological waste or biological spill, sorry, biological spill. If your patient vomit or there is blood on the floor so you have to know how to manage the body fluids, any biological spill on the floor. We have already spill kit all over hospital, so you have to use the biological spill. This is a question with another way, what should be done in case of blood or body fluids? At this time, you have to, uh, what we can say, make a sign, so you will not allow anybody to enter the area with spill. So you have to put a signage at this area, not allowed to enter this area. Then you have to wear the PPE, open your spill kit, wear PPE, and you have to put sand or wooden or tissue paper according to the absorbent you have in your uh, spill kit. Then you have to collect on the yellow plastic, then you have to make pouring of the Clorox 1 to 10, you have measurement, you have to make one to 10. If you don't have measurement, make pure Clorox and put on the area. After around five to 10 minutes, you have to dry it and it will be safe. You can, the housekeeping, they can clean the area. This is a responsibility of the housekeeping, but if housekeeping is not available, the nurse, she's the one supposed to contain the spill, not allowed to leave the spill everybody will touch this spill, the microorganism will be spread. The doctor has also to know 
how to contain the spill because they will not allow any spill will be in his clinic or his area without correct cleaning he will ask the cleaner to bring the spill kit and they have to clean correctly then it must be after cleaning it will be safe so they can use the ordinary mop what is the infection control policy regarding used medical equipment or an instrument? We told that not allowed to wash any instrument in your area. You have to transfer to the CSSD and you have to apply transportation gel. Uh, do you have, uh, do you uh, make reusing for the single use device? If you have a strial, you have already strial device, sorry, strial uh, instrument single use so allow it to make re-sterilization and reusing this is not allowed at all you have to dispose the single use item not allowed to send again for CSSD and asking them to re-sterilize for reusing our policy not allowed to reuse the single use device what is the policies when dealing with the multi-drug vial you have already multi-drug vial in all departments like xylocaine, uh, lidocaine, like ventolin, like insulin. So how you are dealing with the multi-drug vials? Uh, suppose uh, when you will open, you have to write date and time. The rubber, you have to clean when you are using every time with clean uh, sterile syringe and needle. You have to keep on the uh, refrigerator or according to manufacturer. If you found any disturbed or discoloration or any change in the content, you have to uh, question this one. Suppose you will not use. Supposed to be disposed within 28 days. Okay. This is the policy how to use uh, multi-drug vials. What is the hostile acquired infection? And how do you know the hostile acquired infection? Uh, health care associated infection or hostile acquired infection this is a uh, surveillance we are doing every month uh, for all hostel to detect the infection related to our facility if the patient coming with infection this is community infection but health